Hello, well, uh, everybody. Welcome to our class. And uh, last week we have talked about love. We have talked about uh, what uh, authentic love is, the char char characteristics of uh, authentic love, and uh, also talk about uh, the love that is fake, and also talk about uh, some other topics related to love. And uh, this week, in this lecture, we are going to talk about relationships, namely the relationships among people, among the relationships between you and other people. And uh, let's uh, start the lecture right now. Okay, so before the lecture, I would like to invite you to watch the uh, movie clip. And uh, this clip is really funny. It is about uh, two men arguing with each other. You can see from this uh, picture. So let's uh, watch the video first. Here we go. It's loading. Yes. Miss? I'll be right there, sir. Where's your headset? She's busy right now, but it's coming. For crying out loud, you're missing important plot points. <laughs> Ma'am? Could you give me a second, sir? Could I maybe get that headset, please? Do not raise your voice to me, sir. I wasn't raising my voice. Okay, just calm down. I am calm. I just want my headset. Sir, our country is going through a very difficult time right now, and if you're not going to cooperate... I don't know where a headset ties into patriotism. Is there a problem here, sir? I, I don't think so. Can you come to the back of the plane with me so we can have a talk? A talk about what? There's not a problem. This steward is just keep flight attendant. The flight attendant keeps ignoring me when I ask. Calm down. I am calm. What is it with you people? You people. Oh, now wait a minute. I don't mean you people. I mean you people. Sir, I will not tolerate any racist behavior on the plane. This is a very difficult time for our country. I, I know that. I'm not a racist. I just want to watch the movie. I'm only going to say this one more time, sir. Calm down. I'm calm! <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you think? Not guilty. It's a no-brainer. Mr. Bosnick, in case 723, assault and battery against a flight attendant, I find you guilty. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can see from this clip, there must be something something wrong with uh, with these people. Uh, they people. Uh, it, at the beginning, the story is like uh, that man want, wants a headset to watch the movie on the airplane, and the attendants are like, uh, they the attendants don't really care about much about the requirement from that man, and the man is a little bit unhappy about this. And uh, the, the old man on the on the side, like, said, said something to make this man more uh, angry, more angry. And uh, later, uh, th this man started to argue with the attendant. And the the conflict and the 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 conversation becomes like verbal conflict. This verbal conflict is elevating. One step by step, and at the beginning, it just uh, this man wants the headset, 
to watch a movie. And later it becomes assault. Uh, later it becomes uh, patriotism uh, and then becomes racism. So it is elevating uh, a step by step. And, uh, and, and this, I think this is a re really good example of awful communication or bad communication between people, among people. So the, qu the question we, we need to ask is like how to communicate for them, how to communicate to not elevate, ele not elevate the, the seriousness of uh, the conversation. So how to, how to calm down, how to keep the conversation as it is. That's the, that's a really good question for us to know about. And uh, and uh, this clip is very dramatic. We usually don't do do this. You really don't talk like this. However, uh, sometimes in our life, we we follow our conversations. Sometimes follow this kind of pattern. And uh, sometimes we meet a situation situation that. Uh, uh, we are so angry with each other. And uh, actually there's just a very little stuff in our life. So let's uh, see how we need, a, how we communicate, how we communicate better to make it, make, make uh, our life better. So let's, uh... Yeah, so uh, let's uh, let's think about uh, this question. What is a good or high quality relationship like? So uh, you can find someone right now you can talk to, or you can talk to yourself and share your understanding about this question. So what is a good relationship like? What is a high quality relationship like? In your understanding, what are relationships are good? What are the features of good relationship? So you can pause the video right now and think about the answers, share your arms, you are understanding to yourself or to other people. Okay, so next uh, major topic, we are going to talk about the, the features of good relationship or meaningful relationships. So before knowing about what a bad relationship is, we can know about what a good relationship is. So we can have a sense of how to build a good relationship. So there are some key words about the meaningful relationships. Uh, the first thing is the position if there are two people, they have a relationship, no matter it's romantic relationship, no matter it's of their friends or their like other kinds of relationships, there are some features about their relative positions between the two, two persons. The first is that they, they are equal. And no one is superior, no one is inferior, no one is lower, no one is higher, they are equal. You can see this from a romantic relationship. You can see this from uh, the relationship between the parents and the kid, the relationship between friends, relationship between colleagues. The good, in the good relationships, the position, relative positions are, are that uh, they are equal to each other. They are, no one is uh, dominant, no one is higher than the other. And also uh, more importantly, they are, independent, they have independent identities, they are separate. They don't believe they are, they are one person. They don't believe that they should uh, monitor each other. They should uh, manage each other or control each other. They, they don't think so. So in the equal relationship or in the good relationship, there's no controlling, there's no monitoring, there's no manipulating because their identities are separate. Each person is a organism that has his or her own feelings, emotions, cognitions, and motivations and all that. So everyone is a individual, separate independent individual. 
So we need to respect that the fact if we want a good, uh, uh, meaningful relationship. And uh, of course, if because they have separate identities so that they are responsible for their own happiness. So they have their own feelings and emotions. They are responsible for their own happiness. Each one is responsible for each one's own happiness and sadness and other stuff, other emotions. And also do not expect the other to do for them. So it's, it's like we are, we are separate, we are independent. We can make each other happy. We can uh, be honest to each other. We can uh, share the happiness with each other, but we will not expect that this person will do something for me. So nobody has the obligation or responsibility to do something for the other. So no one is owning to someone else. So we, we are the reason why we are together because we can share the happiness. We can make each other happier. We can make, uh, make each other's life better. So that's why we get close. That's why we build a relationship. It's not about obligation. I do, we do not have any obligations uh, to take care, take, taking care of other people. And uh, some something that we can do to improve the quality of relationships uh, can be like we can provide the honest and uh, honest respect of uh, feedback to the other. And also we can be respectful. We can provide the feedback that is honest. It means that uh, we, we provide a true information to the other. So the other knows the, what uh, is happening accurately. And also we need to show the respect to each other because we are equal. No one is superior to the other. So we need to respect the, uh, the, the, the other as a person, as a separate individual. And also uh, people in good relationships uh, pay, pay attention to maintain the relationships, keep the relationships healthy. So relationship is not just one-time thing. It needs cultivation, it needs development, needs to invest for a very, very long time. So it doesn't mean that if you build a relationship with the other, it doesn't mean that you don't have to do anything else in the future to maintain this relationship. You need to invest, you need to keep this uh, relationship good or healthy. And also they can enjoy together, they share the happiness together. So that's the things that they can do in meaningful relationships. And uh, this relationship is not exclusive. That means that uh, uh, it sounds like it sounds familiar. So, so there was once in the previous lecture that I talked about this. So uh, building a relationship doesn't mean it, it is exclusive. It means that uh, you can also find the, the meaning or outside of this relationship. So this relationship is just a part of your life. It's just part of the, the, the meanings that you have. You can find other meanings in other aspects of your life. You can also find other relationships, build other relationships with other people. And, and what is a, what is a effect? What is the outcome of a good relationships? So in a good relationship, each person can get better. So that's the probably most important meaning for why we build relationships together, because we can help each other be better. So make, each person can be better. It's like a relationship is like a, 
environment, really nice social environment in which we can develop, we can be ourselves. We can choose what to do and what can, we can choose what not to do. So these are the outcomes of good relationships. Each one can be better. Uh, each one can be self. We can encourage each other to be their true selves. And also why we build this relationship is because of choice, our choice. We choose to do so. so we choose to do to build the relationships with some people. So no good relationships are based on uh, based on uh, force, based on uh, slaving or based on uh, something that is not free. So the good relationships are based on volition, based on free will, based on free choice. So we have the free choice to choose what, what who we uh, want to communicate with, who we want to build relationships with. So that's really key feature, a uh, key feature of meaningful relationships or good relationships. So actually this is really similar to love. So with authentic love, remember last time, uh, in, in the lecture about the love, uh, so in authentic love, people can get better. People uh, can be their true selves. They have the safety to be their true self. They have the safety so that they can be better in authentic love. And good relationships are also like authentic, authentic love. In good relationships, they can be better. They can be uh, their true selves. They have the safety. So meaningful relationships in the authentic love are like really ideal social environments in which each person can grow, each person can be better. And also another important feature of good relationship is that uh, they are able to deal with conflict. They're, they can successfully most time deal with the conflict that they have. Good relationship doesn't mean that they do not have conflicts at all. It means that they have conflicts, but they can resolve it resolve them and there's a there's a, a down part of the relationship but can, but they can restore they this kind of a relationships are resilient not only a person is resilient but relationships can be resilient they can uh relationships can 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 bad can be bad for a period of time but the good recent relationships can restore to the original state means that uh, they're resilient. So uh, these are uh, the features of uh, meaningful relationships or good relationships. Probably these are not a, is this is not an exhausted list. Uh, there can be other important features as well, but uh, right here we can uh, know about these features are really important in meaningful relationships or good relationships. So let's go to the next topic. And here's another question for you to think about. What is the most successful experience of dealing with anger or conflicts in your relationship? So think about a time that uh, you can successfully deal with anger or conflicts in the relationship. Most successfully. So uh, you, you, can talk, you can think about success, successful experiences of dealing with anger, but you can pick one that is most successful and think about that. Tell that story to yourself or to the person that you can talk to. And then you can pause the video right now and think about it. So next part, we can talk about how to make relationship better or how to manage conflicts or manage anger towards other people.
So first of all, we need to know that uh, sometimes the conflict between two persons might be just a sign of individual differences. It, 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 sometimes it does not involve moral judgment, does not involve what is right or what is wrong. So sometimes uh, people uh, have convicts not because somebody is wrong or somebody is right. It's just because they have different habits, they have different uh, feelings, they have different uh, views, they have a different attitudes towards something, and they're different. And uh, later they, they, they feel like, oh, the other is like, is weird and is, the other shouldn't be like that. The other shouldn't say this, or the other shouldn't have this kind of attitude. They don't allow the other to have other attitudes or uh, behaviors or words so that they have conflict. Sometimes it's just because of individual differences. For example, uh, we have a lot of different uh, habits. So I have one story uh, that is that is really funny. And uh, there's a couple. The uh, the the husbands never turns down the light. And the, the husband will turn up the light all the time and never tends to turn the turn the light down. And uh, the wife is a very uh, careful and uh, conscientious person and very neat, very organized. So the wife doesn't allow that. Every time, uh, every time the, the husband uh, leaves somewhere without turning down the, the light, uh, the wife will be angry and uh, argue, with, argue about that with the husband. The husband is suffering too because has a husband already has this habit of not uh, keep the uh, light on, keeping the light on, never turning off the light. But the wife has a habit of turning off the light when the light is not necessary there. So th th these two people have a uh, husband and wife and have a really huge conflict, are really huge uh, argues, arguing happening all the time in their life. So this is a one case that uh, there are individual conflicts because of individual differences. So uh, sometimes we need to know that uh, sometimes we have conflict with each other just because everyone is unique while everyone is different from each other. And the second thing we need to know is that uh, we can transform the conflict or confrontation to another thing, to a caring act. It is not just a threat in our life. It is also a challenge. It is an opportunity for us to have better relationships it is an opportunity for us to practice our skills to resolve conflicts. So of course, when we have conflict with each other, when we, with other people, it is a threat in our life. It damages our well-being, damages our uh, uh, happiness, but we can, we can think about it a different way. We can transform this as a caring act as something else, as the opportunity or challenge. So how to transform this? How to turn this uh, situation toward a good direction? So really important uh, thing that we need to do is that we need to really listen and understand what the other person says. So understanding is really the, the most important key here to turn the con confrontation to a caring act to resolve the uh, interpersonal conflict. So really listening and understanding what the other person says. And also the second point is that uh, we need to know our motivation. 
we need to know why we do this, why we are angry, why we like to have conflicts with the other. And also tell this motivation, tell this in, uh, intentions to the other. So clarify what you want. Maybe in the example that I just talked about, the husband just wanna maintain the habit. He just had, has uh, this habit, that's it. The wife can, what is the wife's intention? The wife just want to have, maintain the, maintain the, maintain the habits as well. So they, they both want to maintain the habits, but they are different. They have different habits. So make it clear, make it what everyone wants. Make it what everyone is motivated to do. And also this, the next one that is that uh, in the conflict, in the confrontation, we can see how behaviors affect us, how those behaviors affect us, how other people's behaviors uh, influence us, rather than how they are. So you do, do not have to talk, you, you do not have to tell the other how they are or what kind of person they are. You can just talk about how their behaviors affect you, affect the self. Talk about the fact instead of judgments. So don't have to elevate the conflict. Just talk about the, what the, the facts are. And uh, also the next suggestion to manage conflicts is that uh, uh, do not have to plan the next response when the other is speaking. So the, this principle is also the same with the first one. So really understand and listen. Do not do other things when the other is speaking because you need to pay attention, pay the full attention to understand what the other is saying, what the other, other person is, is wanting, is uh, intending to do. And also the next one is that uh, you need to be responsible for your own feelings. It means that if you have some feelings, it's because of your, your psychological mechanism. It is because of you, not because of others. Because we have learned uh, uh, that uh, in, in the uh, stress chapter, the chapter about the stress management, any stress come from the reaction to threats. Actually, the, the feelings and emotions, all the feelings and emotions besides uh, stress are actually from there, are from our brain, are from our neural system, are from our physical body. So our physical body is creating those emotions and feelings in our mind all the time. There are stressors, there are facts, there are things that happened in life. However, we have a reactions to those things. And that's why we have all kinds of feelings, emotions, happy, happiness, and sadness, ang anger, and other stuff. All these feelings and emotions come from the reactions that our physical body created because our physical body needs to respond to some kind of threats in life. So when we know about that, we can take the responsibility for our own feelings. The real reason for why we have those feelings is because we have those feelings, not because other people make us to have those feelings. And it, 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 this fact implies that we can manage our own emotions we can determine what kind of emotions that we can have instead, instead of being controlled by others. If you don't believe that, if you believe that other people make you angry, other people make you happy, it's like you, you it's like they assume that uh, their own emotions are controlled by other people. 
right? Because other people can do something to make them angry, make them happy, make them sad. They don't have the control at all. But it's not the case because any feelings and emotions come from your own brain and the neural system. Okay, so uh, the next uh, suggestion is that uh, we can tell others how we are struggling. Tell the other our feelings. On one hand, understand how the other is feeling and is thinking. But on the other side, let the other know how we are feeling, how we are struggling, how we are thinking. So that's about communication. So real communication can resolve conflicts. Why there are conflicts? Because there is no understanding. There is no real communication happening between the two persons. So if there is real communication happening, we can know each other's feelings and struggling and intentions and motivations and all that. So we need a real understanding of each other. And the last suggestion is that do not walk away from conflict. So face it, confront with it, do not just walk away because the, when the conflicts arise, they are there. They do not just uh, disappear automatically. So sometimes it's just because really small thing can cause conflict. If you walk away, if you do not mention it, it becomes worse and worse and worse. Yeah, so it, it, it may become a really uh, a huge conflict later. Yeah, it's like a, a, when there's fire, you need, to, you need to use water or something else to, to uh, remove the fire, right? So it, to, to, to destroy the fire, fire. you cannot just uh, walk away waiting for the fire is, is more severe. You need to deal with the fire. So uh, I know that uh, sometimes it, it, it's, uh, it's really hard to do. I mean, not walk away from conflicts. Sometimes, oftentimes we just walk away from conflicts. I'm also like that because it's, but, it be, but it's not a, a good uh, thing to do or right thing to do. So uh, the right attitude or proper attitude to deal with conflict is that when there is a conflict, we turn them into a opportunity or challenge instead of avoiding or walking away from that conflict. So that's a, a proper attitude to deal with conflicts. So, uh, Let's like summarize a little bit, a little bit. So the general principle beyond all this suggestion is that everyone needs to understand the other or another, really understanding. And also everyone needs to express their own true feelings and uh, thoughts to the other. So probably that's the, the really key principle of real communication to resolve conflicts. So just make sure you, you are understood by the other and make sure you understand the other. Okay, so let's go to the next part. It is about forgiving. So uh, forgiving also is very important for us to maintain a good relationship. So how to, how to forgive and why to forgive? So the reason for why we forgive others or we forgive ourselves is that we need to move on. We cannot just live in the past. 
we we cannot let the just the, let the the past memory to influence us all the time. We need to go to the future. We need to live in the present moment. We need to be mindful. So that's why we forgive. For, forgive doesn't mean forget. We we can keep the memory. We cannot to forget, but we can forgive. We don't have to stuck in the past. We need to move on. We need to make the, the future life better. So that's the reason why we, we forgive. And also forgiveness is not a one-time event. It's not like suddenly I forgive somebody. Uh, it's not that easy. It's a general process. It's a gradual process and it, it, it is happening in your mind slowly and uh, suddenly you find that uh, you forgive somebody. And uh, there's one thing about forgiving is that how to forgive ourselves. So that's also a topic that is, that is worth discussing. So sometimes we do not, we think that we have done something bad uh, to others or to the society or to something else. We kind of, sometimes we, we cannot forgive ourselves. We cannot uh, acknowledge that fact that we have done something bad to others or to, uh, to something else. Uh, we need to forgive ourselves because we cannot stuck in the past. We cannot, uh, we need to move on to the next stage of life. So Cornish and Wade in 2015 made a, a two, four suggestions, four steps to forgive ourselves. The first step is that we need to take the responsibility. We need to recognize and acknowledge that we are responsible for that act, for that behavior. We need to realize that we did something, we have done something that is not uh, really easy to be forgiven. And uh, the second step, we need to have a process of remorsing. In other words, we, we regret. We regret doing that. We regret uh, uh, yeah, so we remor uh, remorse. And after that, we need to recover from that uh, uh, psychological state. We cannot remorse all the time. We need to restore from that. We need to uh, forgive ourselves and we can do something to, uh, to like uh, make it better. And uh, the last step is renewal. So we can renew ourselves. We can be a new person. We can uh, move on in the in the future life. We can be a better person. We can avoid doing something bad again. Uh, to other people or to something else. So these are the four steps of forgiving the self. Okay, so we have talked about uh, how to manage conflicts and anger. And next part, we can talk about how to communicate effectively or have a good communication. So actually we have talked about how to communicate effectively in the part of managing conflict, but it's uh, like, we can still talk about it. So uh, the first question is like, what brings the barriers in communication? What make it communication worse? What what make it, what, what to make a communication doesn't work? <clears throat> so what is the real reason for that? So Carl Rogers, the, the person, the really important person in the humanistic approach, uh, once said that uh, why we do not have good communication 
is because people tend to judge others, tend to evaluate and judge the statements of others. So when other the other is saying something, people make a judgment, make a, people make an evaluation, put a label on it. Put uh, usually the label is right or wrong or uh, unreasonable. So there's kind of labels. We uh, sometimes just uh, put the label on the statements of other people. So that's what it has is what that that's what happened in our cognitive process. And this process is oftentimes very, very fast, very, very automatic. So that we can we, we don't even realize we make judgments or we evaluate other people. So oftentimes we just rely on this kind of fast automatic responses to other people's speaking. There's too much judging, too much judgments, there's too less understanding. Uh, Yeah, so if they judge all the time so quickly, we cannot really understand the other person. And uh, the other uh, effect uh, outcome is that uh, we cannot take the other's perspective. In other words, we cannot be empath empathic. We, we cannot have empathy on another people, another person. We uh, we just uh, live in our own expectations and assumptions. We believe that all my my expectations, my assumptions are universally right. It should apply to everybody. And other other people, if other people have other expectations and assumptions, they are wrong. They are they are not good. They are bad. So this process, this cognitive process oftentimes happens in our mind and oftentimes is too quick to realize. So what we need to do is that we need to figure out the barriers of effective communication. We know need to know the reasons for why that happens. It lies in our cognitive process. So we have a tendency to quickly judge the other's statements. So uh, Carl Rogers' suggestion is that each person can speak only after this person restates the ideas of feelings of the previous speaker. So that's his suggestion. I think this is very useful. So really understanding and uh, listening means that uh, this person can restate the previous speaker's thoughts and feelings. If uh, this person cannot, it's not a real good uh, understanding and listen. So real, under, real listening means that you listen, you understand, and you restate, repeat what uh, the previous speaker says, said. So that, that's called a real understanding and a listening. So uh, let's talk about the uh, suggestions to effective communication. Again, really, really listen and understand. Specifically, the listener can accurately restate or summarize what the speaker said. So that's called a real listening and understanding. And also you can, uh, as a listener, you can keep silent for a while to, to like think about what this speaker is talking about. Do not have to react to the speaker as soon as possible. And when in the communication, use concrete words and specific words. Make the meaning clear, as clear as possible. So that's why we need to use concrete and specific words. 
<clears throat> because some uh, words are really fuzzy or uh, vague word, words, they, they might bring misunderstanding. Sometimes we cannot understand those words. Uh, so we can use really, really spe specific and concrete words. Uh, for example, if uh, I say, oh, you're, you're too slow. Uh, what, what were you doing? So I waited for you for a very long time. Why you came down so late? So, so, late? so these words are really uh, vague, like uh, too slow or too long, so late. So these words are not concrete at all, not specific. I can instead of said that, uh, uh, say that uh, you, I have waited for you for 30 minutes already when I got here. Since I got here, I, I have waited for you for 30 seconds. We uh, agree that we need to meet half an hour ago, but we didn't because you came down late for 30 seconds, uh, 30 minutes. And I feel not good because I wasted my time for 30 minutes. I do not feel that I was respected. So that's may, that might be a better way to communicate using more specific concrete concept or words. So like 30 minutes, uh, talking about my feelings, like something like that. And uh, the next suggestion is that uh, we do not have to ask uh, too many questions. We can make personal statements. We can say what we want. We can say what we like. We can say what we mean instead of asking too many questions. So using the last example, if, if I say, where did you go? What were you doing? Why, why did you come down so late? Something like that. The other will maybe get upset. Uh, yeah, because asking too many, questions, too many questions, like those questions are like not real questions. They are just like a, a like blaming really like blaming and although it appears like a question but it's, it feels like a blaming so uh, we could just directly talk about our own feelings in that situation do not have to ask so many questions <clears throat> so the next uh, suggestion is that uh, no judging please do not make judgments so quickly um, just talk about specific events, concrete stuff. Do not have to judge. There's one example from the textbook, something like, you'll never think about anybody but my, yourself. It's a judgment. It's a, not a judgment of, it's not even a judgment about a specific event. It's a judgment of that person. Assumes that this sentence assumes that this person Ne never think about anybody else. This person has some problem in, in, the, in the personalities. So that's a really, really serious judgment. So uh, we do not have to do that. We do not have to elevate the conflict. Remember the, the movie clip that we just uh, watched? They always like make judgments, like uh, some patriotism, like racism, assault, or like you people. Actually, that guy means like you too, this man, this attendant, but that guy said, oh, you people, what do you mean? You people. So, so it's like a judgment, judging all the time. Um, 
The next suggestion is that uh, we can, we need to be honest and direct. Honest, uh, honest and respectful and direct feedback to the other. And also next suggestion is respect. We need to respect that we are all unique. We have different thoughts, habits, emotions, intentions, and perspectives. We need to respect that each other is different. So that we can have a common framework that we can work on, that we can communicate. Otherwise, if we do not respect the other's differences, we cannot have a real understanding, right? Because we assume that uh, you are wrong. You are not right. You shouldn't have that uh, assumption. You shouldn't have that uh, habits or something else. So we need to respect for each other's differences. And also technically speaking, we need to make sure that uh, our verbal language and non-verbal language, such as postures or facial expressions, eye contacts, all this non-verbal language is consistent with verbal language. So what we say is consistent with what we show. So make it clear, make your expression very clear. And uh, the next suggestion is that uh, we can be open to express feelings. It's okay to talk about the feelings, express the feelings to each other so each other can understand. If we are not open to show our feelings to others, uh, there's no base for real understanding and listening. So all of these are the suggestions of um, effective communication. So all, a lot of content is overlapped with the suggestions to manage conflicts. Actually, uh, with effective and good communication, we can resolve conflicts easily. Why there's conflict between, between two persons? That is because there's no effective communication. So all the, all the stuff that we just talked about are the strategies and ways to have good communication and then resolve uh, in, interpersonal conflicts. So my own understanding of uh, the key to effect, effective communication is that expressing the feelings rather than making judgments, rather than judging. Sometimes the judging happens so quickly in our mind and we don't even realize it. So we need to, we can do something to change this situation. We can slow down our thinking process. We can focus on our feelings. We need to identify our own feelings and then talk about them to other people. Just talk about the feelings. And also at the same time, listen to the other, listen what the other is speaking, is talking and understand what the other is feeling. So actually the, 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 the nature of effective communication is that we exchange the feelings. Emotions and feelings uh, can be the common framework that we all work on, or we can get agreement on this framework. It provides a framework that we are we we all on we are all on that framework. <clears throat> so that's why we need to express the feelings instead of uh, thinking, analyzing, and making judgments. So that's. That's uh, about uh, if communication and uh, anger, uh, anger management or conflict and management. Management. So I think these these are these suggestions are very useful and uh, practical. You can use this right away in your life, starting from now. Uh, yeah, there can be other suggestions as well, but uh, we can talk about this much. 
So next topic is about the the ways to end end a relationship. How to end a relationship if we do not want that relationship anymore. So how to like uh, give up a relationship or end a relationship. So when you end a relationship, we need to allow ourselves to be sad, to grieve. So grieving happens when something is lost, something is missing. Some people are missing. Some people are, uh, some people have passed away or something is missing or relationship is broken. We need to allow ourselves to have a process of grief, to have a process of being sad so that we can refresh ourselves and continue to a newer life in the future. So allow ourselves to have those negative feelings when we end a relationship. And also give ourselves time to recover. It's okay to express anger because we need to have a channel to express our feelings. Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes we need to depersonalize the other's actions. It means that uh, we need to do not link other people's behaviors to their intentions or to their personalities or to their morality. So their actions are their actions. It doesn't mean that they are bad people or they mean it or uh, they are just like this. It doesn't necessarily mean that. Actions do not necessarily link to one person's morality or uh, personalities or characters. And also you need to be responsible for your own actions because you're, you do every actions that you have done. And also uh, when you are too sad, you can find a social support from others. Remember a good relationship can help us be better. So uh, finding social support, finding uh, a grieving or recovering in a good uh, relationship that is a really good way. And the next one, forgive yourself. So just to realize that the, oh, you're probably responsible for a part of this fact, a part of this situation and allow yourself to be imperfect, allow yourself to, to regret. And also you can write journals it's like expressing the anger, expressing the feelings. So you, you, you can find some channels to express the feelings so that the feelings are gone and you identify, oh, that's the feelings that you have and you will feel better. Sometimes why there are all kinds of feelings in the mind, in the, in the body that cannot go away, that is because sometimes the, the body wants to tell us that you have this feeling, I need to want, I want to tell you. Uh, if we do not recognize that, we, if we do not uh, acknowledge we have those feelings, our physical body is creating, creating those feelings all the time. So when we forgive ourselves, when we express those feelings uh, by speaking, by writing journals, Our body knows, okay, you, you, you got it. Uh, and that's it, we, our, my work is done. So the feelings are never appearing again. So uh, it's, it sounds magical, but um, sometimes we have a certain kind of feeling all the time just because we ignore that feeling or we do not allow that feeling to express. So there's a conflict between our physical body and our mind. Our mind suppresses that feeling and our body is creating that feeling all the, all the time, continuously. If we allow the, the, just the feelings to express and it, is, it will disappear eventually.
Okay, so let's let's uh, do a activity here right now. So you can summarize three to five strategies to build good relationships. After you listen to all the stuff in the in this video in this lecture. So use the knowledge covered in the lecture and also you, the, the, your own experiences. Probably you have some experiences or and successful uh, understandings of how to build good relationships. So use, use any knowledge and experiences and summarize some strategies to, to build good relationships, three to five. You can write down, write down your answers on the notebook or in your laptop. Right now, you can pause the video and do this. Okay, so uh, here are the key points to know about. Uh, so first of all, we need to know the characteristics of meaningful relationships. So those characteristics we can know about. And uh, next one is the, the guidelines the, or the suggestions to manage conflicts and anger. And we have talked a lot about how to manage conflicts. And the next one is the suggestions to having effective communication. Uh, yeah, so the, we have talked about this, those suggestions. We can we need to know about them. So. These three parts are really the essential stuff we, that we didn't know for this week, for this uh, chapter. Okay, so make sure that uh, you really understand and digest those guidelines, those suggestions. And then let's talk about the uh, journal assignment. Okay, so this week uh, we need to finish Journal 7. Journal 7 uh, is about relationships, of course. So choose a relationship of yours, any kind, and reflect this relationship in, in the journal. You can make a personal reflection about this relationship. So in this journal, answer three questions. So the first question is that uh, reflect and read, write about the quality of this relationship. You can use the characteristic of relationships on uh, the on the textbook on page uh, two one one to two to uh, two one one to page two uh, thirteen to evaluate this relationship. You can use the uh, the characteristics of relationships on these three pages to evaluate the relationship. And the second, what are the barriers that stop you from improving the quality of this relationship? You can talk about the barriers. You can talk about any like factors that stop, uh, stop this relationship to have high quality. You can talk about that. And the third question is that, uh, what are you going to do to improve the quality of this relationship in the future? You can, this question is about uh, the strategies, it's about the future improvement. You can about, talk about, you could plan something to improve the quality of this kind of relationship. You can do something. Uh, you can combine what you have learned in the class. You can use the personal experiences. You, you can use the, uh, the lectures. You can use the textbook. You can just, whatever ways you can come up with some uh, strategies to improve this relationship. So it's very clear. First, reflect how this relationship is like. Second, what are the barriers? What are the difficulties of this relationship? And a third, what are the strategies in the future to improve this relationship? And the 15 points, 
and uh, four points for each question is due this week at the end of this week yep april 4th and uh so that's it for this week we can continue our class next week and uh see you